Hi everybody, my name is Wes. I'm going to be painting a painting of this cat. It's on my monitor there, a black cat. On this canvas here, in acrylic paint. First thing I've got to do is make sure this camera stays here. Okay, I think that's good. So this is just my method of painting. Uh, sometimes I do it differently than other times, but uh, like for instance, sometimes I'll paint, I'll start with a drawing, but uh, usually I don't. Usually I just go right in with paint. This time I'm gonna use, uh, it's got a phthalo blue and burnt umber mixed together. I'm gonna brown and a blue, which kind of makes a, a black, uh, but I've got more blue on here, I think. And what I'm going to do is roughly just mark out these will be the size of the cat's face and the ears, top of the head. So it's going to be somewhere around here. And he's a lounging cat, so the body goes off this direction. All right, another ear. Goes off that direction, and the nose right around the center, slightly to the left of center. Here's kind of the main mouth part. And the eyes. Um, I'm just gonna fill all this in with this blue color, even the eyes. With acrylic paint, it dries fairly quickly compared to oil paints. And so you end up working in uh, various uh, layers of paint. So with the first little layer, I like to just get a basic shape down. Um, it's not exact, but it's something to work with. And once I get that shape, I'll go back with um, some white or off-white paint and we still have the background to deal with. In the photo it's mostly washed out and white and I'm going to I think stick with that idea for now. But what I do is I cut into the image wherever I think I've got it wrong on the first step. And of course it's going to pick up some of that wet paint but uh, again early preliminary steps of the way I paint just uh, It's just to get the basic idea down and then subsequent steps will refine that idea. So here cutting in to redefine that ear and the side of the face. As I go, get this first layer finished so I'll let it dry give it a couple minutes to dry and then I'll be back shortly all right next step um, I'm pretty much going back over what I've already got there um, well, first of all, this uh, wash look where you can see uh, if there was some, uh, something on the canvas already, this would be transparent to it, and you can kind of see the texture of the wash. And I don't want like that look, I want it to be paint, right? Like paint. So I'm going to start with uh, just going in and uh, I think I'll start, this is that same mixture of burnt umber and um, phthalo blue. Uh, this time I've got a touch more of the brown side, the burnt umber side, and it's probably appearing black on the camera, but I'm just going in on everywhere I see closer to pure black on the image, I'm going to start with that. Uh, so I've got it right here under this ear, and this edge of the ear, which I'm also 
you know, like every stage, I'm just redefining as I go as well what what details remain and what would be changed. So run along there a little bit. Um, the top of it is pretty much outlined in dark black. side as well. We've got darker shade under the ears. already see that kind of defines the shape a little more than this vague um, indications would. All right, and then on either side, this will actually help find the eye, because on either side of the nose, or the bridge of the nose, I can see the dark shadow shapes. And this eye is probably going to cut into this a bit, but I'm just going to a lot of times it's easier to place things as shapes rather than lines. If I were to try to, you know, uh, get the line exactly right, I'd be off. But if I were doing a shape, then the line could be anywhere within that shape, uh, if that makes sense. So in other words, it's kind of a heuristic that gets me close to the answer. And the fact that I know that the answer is in there somewhere kind of gives me a certain amount of trust in the process and so and I, it probably looks weird looking at it that way but now I'm trying to find the edge the end of that nose which again is somewhere in this space but I'm not sure exactly where so I'm going to just put, leave it as a line uh, painting this way you kind of have to learn to trust that it'll work out in the end <laughs> Because for a long time you have this funny looking, these funny looking shapes, and sometimes it comes off looking cartoony. Sometimes it just looks ugly. Uh, but that's just part of. So now I'm trying to find this edge here. That's just part of the the process uh, that I'm using here. There's many ways to paint, of course. This is only my way. All right, this still looks, uh, staying with this dark, finding these dark places on the image where it's either more in shadow or it could even be local color, but being a black cat everything's black so the idea is uh, is just to, find, to paint what you see if I were not painting what I'm seeing but painting rather what I know is there I would be tempted just to paint the whole thing black without uh, starting with blue, uh, which, uh, you know, just stated out loud, sounds like the thing you should do, but in reality you don't see just a, a shadow shape, you see the details of the face when you look at the image, and that is, anyway, that's what I'm trying to do. So now I'm just taking a step back to look at it as a whole. And it seems like I've got the face a little elongated. It doesn't really bother me too much, though, because this isn't like a commission for a specific cat. It's, as long as it comes out looking like a cat, I think I can live with it. But I'll just shorten it a touch by moving the shapes around a bit. Actually, I think that helped a lot because the chin wasn't as pronounced in the photo. OK, uh, so I've got that basic. Uh, step done with that with the darks 
Uh, what I might want to do next is I can see there's warm areas like in the ears and there's a warm uh, bit of fur here and here. When I say warm, I mean more leaning towards the brown and red hues rather than the blues. So I'm actually going to go in just with a bit of kind of adding red to my, my black mixture. And I'm just going to kind of dump that in there just as a quick reference. Uh, sometimes when the brush gets too dry, just dip it in water and keep going. Okay. So now still working with the idea that I've got still these dry areas to work in. Uh, I'm just going to go right back in with a lighter shade now of everywhere else on the photo that I can see where it's highlights. In other words, it's uh, brighter than the mid-tones. Uh, so what I'm going to do is grab, and the highlights in this image are all, um, they're all cool colors, they're all uh, browns. I mean, I'm no, sorry, they're all blues. So. Oh, that's a little too dark. That's more of a mid-tone, which I can use in some spots here, here and there, just to fill in. But if I want to get to the highlights, I mix white into that, and then I'll see, and yeah, that's more of a highlight. And I'll just kind of add that in, because on the bridge of the nose, of course. And there's a little bit peeking in over here. Whenever I go away for a little while, I'm, trying, I'm kind of mixing the paint on my palette. Sometimes I'll end up mixing not enough paint, and so you end up with a very dry mixture that doesn't that doesn't go on the canvas very quickly or easily. All right, um, this is kind of the lip, the top lip area. Again, further, further layers, further steps will refine these areas more as I go. All right, so. Something like that, and I see the. Just as a reminder, I'm going to put a little extra white just on the tip of the nose. I'm kind of trying to find it a little more precisely now. So right around there. Just remind me that that's the. That's the brightest that I see on the cat, in the photo. there. Okay. Okay, next up. Um, let's go ahead and do the uh, eyes. We're going to figure out where the eyes go. Still with this uh, medium-large brush. The photo, the very uh, yellow eyes. Um, now, any time you put yellow over a darker color, you'll end up with kind of a darker yellow, unless you really lay it on thick. So I like to mix a little bit of white in with the yellow, or even start with just white, and then you could put the yellow on top of that layer of white. All right, so. But I'm just going to kind of find it here. Um, I look at kind of where the ear is at specific points, like the where the ear meets the side of the face, and kind of kind of see the angle where that meets the edge of the eye. 
and it is right around there. So I'm just going to indicate that a bit, and then I, I you know, I could judge how that is shaped, but I'd also like to know where this edge of the eye goes. So I'm going to guess there, and then I'll check it with the ear again. I'll say, okay, there's the edge of the ear. I kind of see where that lines up. That seems to be all right there. Let's see about the top here. This about part of this ear. This ear actually probably goes over a little bit more, but I'll check it because I know where straight up and down would be. And then I see that it's uh, that would fall into right around that part of the eye. So this should be about right for this edge. And then I just kind of trace that out from this edge to this edge. So I can get that close. And again, this isn't uh, perfect. This is going to all be subject to iterations of uh, layers, however many layers it might take. Um, and then this has more of a curve to it, more of a half moon shape. It actually goes down a bit and then it curves around. And then I kind of step back and I see if I'm happy with it and I see that this isn't quite right. I actually had this part is there excess pain, I'll just get rid of that. All right, but that's close. And then I could kind of judge based on this, it's gonna basically be right across the way, you'll see the edge of the, this eye. And then again, looking where the ear meets, it kind of comes down at an angle further this way. Of course, it would be even with that other eye, so up a bit. So somewhere around there, and there's a bit of a dip downward. So something like this, and this goes, angles this way, back up to there. Um, that's going to be a good guess, but it's I'm fairly certain I'm going to be fixing this in the next layer. So, but for now, that's just fine. Let's dry off the brush, and I'm going to just jump right into the background. I never really call a layer finished until the very final detail work where I can see if I need to alter a color or move a shape, uh, that sort of thing. Because uh, everything along the way is subject to change. If I don't like the yellow eyes, I can change them to red if I want to or anything else. Uh, anything else. And, and, you know, and like I said, acrylic paint, it all dries fairly quickly so you work in layers. You're not blending as much as waiting for that layer to dry so you can work on the next layer. Alright, so I'll have to open some more paint. I usually get them in uh, jars of paint. This is Dick Blick's uh, brand. I, I don't really have the brand preference. I usually just look for the cheapest stuff. Uh, I'm just going to work straight with the white paint. Because again, that's kind of what the photo is showing, is the white. Uh... Also, these ears are a touch large, so let's kind of correct as we go. And this kind of goes down and away. Um, each time I do this, working in the background, I'm always correcting. Uh, the shapes in the foreground, as well as adding whatever, you know, is in the background. But the main point, the main point of the painting is the subject matter, which is the cat, obviously. And so I'm always looking towards that first and foremost, it's getting that right. Uh, and again, with something that's not, that I'm not being paid to paint, like someone's pet, I don't really care if it's exact but if you if you get it close uh, close enough then that's, that's pretty much what I'm going for but working with a photo is important I think because uh, just guessing at what something looks like uh, I wouldn't have painted this I'd paint something uh, probably a bit more cartoony and unrealistic to tell you the truth The imagination comes in how I choose to depict it and what techniques I might try out, that sort of thing. And happy accidents, you know, if uh, 
if for instance I I outlined this with white and it came beyond the black part and I kind of like that look I might leave it um, but anytime I not anytime but often when I try to do that sort of thing on purpose it doesn't uh, it looks forced and unnatural and so I tend to I tend to not do that sort of thing. Um, try to try to stay away from gimmicks and technique just for technique's sake. If the technique can help out the overall image, then I'm cool with it. Uh, otherwise, it's just kind of a gimmick. And I'm not totally opposed to gimmicks, uh, but using them as a crutch is not it's not as fun alright over here this is a, a lighter shade because it's kind of more in the sun and in the background so I'm going to go ahead and add that in something like that and while I've got this on my brush I'll go ahead and redefine this again that's, since that's dry This cat has sunblock on his nose. It must be a lifeguard, a beach cat. All right. Whoops. think of what I can explain here as I'm going, but I'm just kind of fiddling with it uh, as I go. So some of that's going to be difficult to explain. Um, Alright, I'm going to go back to the dark color because I see one thing I can clarify a bit, and that is um, this shape here. This is darker, and it kind of fits behind this front part a little more. So I'm going to look and see where it is. Looks like it comes right as right where this end of the nose comes is where this ends. So I'm just going to take this, and it kind of goes like that. And now I've got it a little more pronounced in the photo, but that's fine. I'll, just as needed, and it may be one of those things that just looks cool that way. We'll see. Okay. Um, also in the photo you can see um, his little leg and paw is kind of sticking up right here. So I'm just going to indicate that with a darker line and I can define that however clearly I want to later on it's just a point of reference for me as I'm painting really if I don't like it I can just delete it paint over it the fact that it doesn't add to the design of the painting as a whole all right um, obviously, as you can see, I'm not painting individual hairs. I'm not um, worrying too much about detail. Uh, although pos positioning of the different general shapes is a good idea to get early on. It just prevents you from painting over and over again. Uh, especially if you, if you put too much detail in early, then it's a lot more work to correct it later on. 
try to keep all the detail out. I'm not painting individual hairs. You don't see whiskers yet. That comes at the very end. Um, all right, so this uh, this cheek I can see. Cheek, would that be a cheek? It's more like the, uh, the muzzle. <laughs> it would be on a dog. I don't know if that's the same with a cat. Okay, so the muzzle, we'll call it, doesn't come all the way out to the edge of the eye. It actually stops around three-fourths of the way through the eye, so closer to there. So I'm going to go ahead and correct that. And we'll see how it looks. Let's see. Looks like it kind of tucks in a bit more abruptly. Something like that. Okay. Now taking a step back. Alright. So it does look a whoops. It does look a bit abrupt this uh, leaping from this dark to the light. But I think that's mainly because this isn't as light in the photo and there's variation. So I think that'll work itself out as I paint back into this. Again, one of these uh, early steps is just a matter of putting aside your uh, expectations, maybe? Putting aside your, uh, uh, that part of your critical brain that's looking at the finished product. Because all we're doing is, we're not comparing this to the finished product, we're comparing it to where it is now, to the next step it needs to be, if that makes sense. Alright, and I think this is dry now, you can see how fast that dried. So I'm going to go in with as pure black as I can get. Of course my brush still has a lot of paint on it. And I'm still, by the way, working with this you know, medium to large size brush uh, to avoid getting into details. It's the main reason I'd like to do that. Okay, so the nose, I mean, the nose is actually a little out of position looks in the photo to, to start well, close to where I am, but this side ends a little closer in. So maybe more like that we'll call it. And there's a dark bit of darkness there. Okay, but let me get back to what I was doing. And that's reshaping this eye. So all this is doing is kind of outlining. In the photo I can see that it, it definitely gives, there is an outline the way the eye is so which actually is very helpful when that happens because uh, it helps read you know define shape define shapes is a lot easier to work with than amorphous uh, blobs a lot of times okay so this eye okay I can already see that the eyes are too close together you see when artists hold up their brushes and they're using their thumb, uh, what that does, you measure, you keep your arm fixed, and you're measuring a length and then comparing that length from there to there with another area on the photo. So I can see that the eye should be all slightly larger than this area. So now I can do the same thing with this, keeping my fingers the same. You can see that it is larger, but I think it needs to be even larger. And part of that is, I think, is this eye is too large. So if I come back in, and cut that off there, and reshape that around. Something closer to that. In the eye, you can see the is that the iris, or the pupil. I don't know now what what the difference is. All right, adding that makes it look like a cartoon. I realize that, but it's cool. Everything's cool. Nothing to see here. All right. Details come later. Perhaps I shouldn't have even. Uh, 
edit that. Because <laughs> now that's all you're looking at, isn't it? I think it is. Okay. Adding this dark sh shapes back in, shadow areas. All right. And I can go ahead and suggest these, I don't know if there's a name for them, where the whiskers meet, there's often these little ridges. Happens in dogs as well. I don't know if there's a name for that, but I'm gonna suggest that with paint. It's the same idea of, as before, putting something down, then in later, at a later time, I'll uh, reassess and and modify it as I need it. Okay, I'm good for now. Let's leave that alone, let it dry, and come back and take a fresh look at it. I guess I should mention that the the local color or the or the actual color of the cat is not too important to me because, uh, well, for one, it's not a, a commission painting uh, where someone's expecting, you know, a more <laughs> exacting uh, image. But, uh, but more importantly, this is supposed to be a work of art. It's supposed to be um, an artistic interpretation of the thing. If I wanted something exact, I'd just take a photo of it. Of it. So, so when uh, you know when I see that this uh, this blue is the stalo blue is a little more on the I don't know what you, uh, purpley look to it, a violet look um, rather than a true blue. That doesn't bother me as much. Um, Although if, if it if it did, I would just you know fix it to suit my own desire for the painting itself. Uh, I don't know if any of that makes sense. Uh, and besides all that, um, that can all be changed at the end. You know the color of everything can be altered with a wash or just with another layer of paint. So I'm not totally uh, considering that right now, I guess you'd say. Okay, I'm trying to decide what to do next on this cat painting and I, I guess I need to go back into the highlights a bit. Um, uh, obviously these outlining of the eyes isn't as pronounced on the, on the actual photo, and so I'm thinking adding in the highlights as they are in the photo will, will take care of that problem. And since it is getting closer to the end of the painting, I'll, I'll start, when I add my brush strokes, I'll add it according to how the, the fur on the cat lies, just so that if any of those layers are still showing at the end, they'll only help the overall texture of the cat. If that makes sense. And I kind of like the way this brownish highlight uh, is lay lying, laying over that uh, background of blue. So I think I'm just going to kind of keep going with that. All the while reshaping the shapes of the previous layer.
see there's some lighter hairs right here than the ear. I'm just going to suggest with the, uh, it's called dry brush technique where you don't have as much water uh, mixed with the paint and it, you lightly drag it over the surface and that creates that texture, which I'm hoping will look a bit like individual hairs. It's not exactly, but again, to be fixed later. reinforce that warm color right there in the fur just because I like how it looks adding a little uh, raw sienna to the burn umber mixture Okay, what next? What next? Um, usually around this stage, uh, I'll run into the decision of whether to uh, keep going the way I'm going to make it a more, uh, uh, messed that up. Anyway, to make it a more of a uh, uh, standard uh, painting which I usually do more for commissions, uh, or if I'm going to experiment with the piece to make a more, uh, I don't know, it's, it, more interesting decisions, let's say, uh, play around with it. Um, for our purposes, I suppose, I suppose the more experimental uh, path would be more interesting might take more time, but, so, um, here's what I, I'll do, and this might be shocking to see, and if this bothers you, just look away, but what I plan to do now is to mess up the painting a bit. And the reason I'm doing this is because when you mess up a painting by adding color and then go back and fix it, you often end up with something more interesting than when you started. Uh, for that same reason, I, I'll often start a painting with uh, just the totally the wrong colors, just so that once it's fixed, some of the other color that was there uh, peeks through here and there and uh, adds interest to the overall painting. So I'm creating a uh, yeah, messy cat now. Uh, there's not really a rhyme or reason to this. Well, there's a bit of a reason, but it's not apparent until we get to that stage. And again, I'm only doing this now because I think it'd be more interesting to see me do one of these kind of paintings than, than the more boring kind of paintings. 
All right, it's pretty well messed up. I don't have much yellow though. So add a little more yellow. That background pure white was actually getting a little boring to me anyway. All right. So, while most of that dries, I'm going to try to get the eye color closer to the photo. There's a bit of orange in with the yellow. Try applying it thickly to see how that looks. Yeah, that's close to the right hue. I think that'll work. I think what I'm going to also do is do a little bit of outlining. Maybe just in a black. Just to solidify a few things. I'm not sure how abstract I'm going to leave this at the end. I'm just kind of making these decisions as I go, which admittedly is a little harder when I'm talking about what I'm doing, but but this is how I wanted to do this uh, painting, just to answer some questions that I've heard from people online about how I paint, about the decision making it goes into it. I guess what I'm saying is I don't totally understand it myself, but uh, here's my attempt at an explanation. <laughs> There's quite more room on this side, actually. Try to decide if the background, maybe if I make that a bolder color like uh, red or, or something, I wonder if that would help things or, or not. Let's see what that looks like. I do kind of like the red. Maybe an orange. lighter though, I think, since it is a black cat, I want it to stand out as a black cat.
turning to this lighter color, but that's okay. Uh, it's all an experiment. At this point, I need to let it dry, really, because uh, I keep picking up layers of paint from underneath. That's not really helping anything. But I will go back again, move that down a little bit. Reshape that chin. Well, all right, I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, I think I might go with the opposite of this red and go with a green in the background. Just to try it out. Oh, I like that. I think it's cool. Maybe not that yellow. Tempering down that green a bit, uh, just because it's the only green in the painting. There we go. Getting rid of the green almost entirely, but uh, I still prefer that cool color as the backdrop. Oftentimes, 
uh, backgrounds, once they get hazy and in the far distance they become a little cooler, you know, more of the blue of the sky and that sort of thing, and the green of, the, of nature. So I think that's why the green looks more natural as the background. Okay, now, getting this to look more like the photo, I'm seeing this is a little narrow. It needs to come out just a touch. Is there anything I can do to get this more like the photo means the cat becomes more realistic. And right now that's my goal. Um, there are times where I'll let a painting get more abstract. Um, it just kind of depends on the mood, really, because uh, that's part of the whole process of, of doing art, is you get to decide what form that art might take. Reassess here. Okay. Spinning my wheels a little bit with this one, but I'm still uh, pretty confident that the end result will be alright. Some paintings uh, just turn out right from the start. Some paintings, it just takes a while to find what uh, what that painting might be, its potential. Alright. And as I go, each little step I take, uh, I can assess, was that a positive move? If not, I could uh, paint back over it adjust the color or the shape of it, but if it is, success, it's moving towards the goal, the finished product. Alright, um, I guess I should also mention as I'm, as I'm painting, I'm keeping in mind that I'll have whiskers that'll go on at the very end few errant hairs here and there, that sort of thing, will go on the very end, and any kind of little, you know, like that hair type stuff, fur coming off, uh, actually that's not a bad effect there, but, uh, but all that really needs to be saved for the final stages, the detail stage. Okay. Alright, I'm getting back to where I like it. I don't mind the patchwork look with the reds and the, I don't mind that too much. Although I will get rid of some of it. I'm gonna start with this one, because that's definitely not in the photo. And it's pretty prominent red. A lot of these reds um, uh, will probably end up blending in with the with the dark fur of the cat. And it just creates interest. It's not a detriment to the painting at all. Okay. Kind of continuing to assess what might be in need of improvement. There's a little ridge there, maybe not quite as pronounced. Alright, I think I'm going to do now is switch from this medium large brush to a smaller brush.
start by reestablishing the eyes a bit, I think. I'm double checking the shape. They're close enough, I think. Um, close enough to the photo where I won't quibble too much. Down. Pay close attention to the color changes within the eye. Uh, notice it's got more of a, a yellow orange at the top and a fading down to a yellow kind of around the edges at the bottom. And there's, of course, a highlight that I'll get to in the eye. Right, this comes down a bit. So we're going to find where this nose is again. Something like that. paper towel just to dampen that down a bit. Kind of smear it. Painting a black cat as well as a black dog, um, you're pretty much relying on highlights. Um, obviously, if a black cat is in a dark room, you basically can't see them because there's no highlights available. So that's kind of what I'm looking at on the photo is where those highlights are more pronounced and kind of relying on that to be my guide. Still trying to gauge the width of the snout, the muzzle, whatever you might call that, this area. Is 
it sure seems a little wide here now, which I think it is. All these measurements, of course, are based on other proportions within the same painting, so, you know, if anything's off, the whole thing kind of goes off. Uh, and just the cat, the image of the cat becomes smaller or larger, depending, you know. I guess that's self-evident, you know, that's not really a... Alright, i will darken this edge here. I don't know if that helped, but okay. Uh, this comes out just a bit, this edge. Kind of like that smeary effect on the edges. Alright, I do see this needs to be a little more rounded here. So I'm just going to take it go. Something like that. Highlighted fur right in this area here. That helps kind of frame the eyes there too. Let's see. Dark off there. is a little off. Cat size always have a funny shape to them. Uh, that's hard to put your finger on. At times they'll look pointed, but other times oval. <laughs> um, these aren't really, is, isn't really a shape that has a name. It's just kind of a big cat eye shape. Alright, is that getting close? Yeah, I think that's getting close. It's a very stilted looking painting, I realize that. But, sometimes that could be endearing. <laughs> well, that's an orange here. To highlight that warm fur. And I'll repeat that color over here. Don't mind that. Up here as well, perhaps. The ears might actually be a bit short on my painting, but uh, I don't mind that too much. You can always imagine them uh, leaning forward a bit, so the perspective might might produce this effect. Okay. Okay, there's definite nostrils I can see in the photo. Um, sort of here. Here. Everything else would be slightly lighter. So let me try that. up that, that line there helps a little bit, I think, since their lips aren't, they're, uh, they're fully furred, full of hair, so 
and they become a little more ill-defined as far as shapes go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put these lines in approximately where they go. And again, there it's all in fur, so it's very vague on the cat, this one anyway. So I'm just going to approximate it and then fix it in the next step. a little more time with this one than I normally do, except for in commissions, because uh, those normally require a bit more precision. This one, uh, I'm kind of going a middle route, trying to get it close, but not dwelling on perfection. Okay, highlight. Let's go ahead and put a little highlight here and Highlights are definitely very important, although it's easy to overdo highlights, I've, I've noticed. Sometimes it's better just to put them in and then, and then cut back on them in the next layer. Some of this isn't highlights, it's just lighter yellow. Okay, I'll let that dry and then fix it next step. Uh, I'll also redo the pupil slits. If that's the right term for them. Alright, it's about the right placement. Just going to darken that up a bit. that look. Ooh, a little mesmerizing. It's not as pronounced in the photo, but again, next step after it dries, I'll fix it. Okay. See a bit of a tough with the wet black paint I just put on there. Alright, again, not quite right, but closer. Does that side go up more too? Sometimes you just have to call it good on a lot of that stuff. Part of this seems like I'm just rambling, but uh, that's okay. I don't mind. Uh, it's one part that's hard to articulate uh, when talking about painting is kind of the need to get certain uh, aspects of the painting correct. Like in other words, uh, struggling with the width of this for so long, 
but I know that I need to get that right first before I can do the whiskers and the details on top of that layer. So I kind of, those end up being the, just the parts I worked on a little longer, although in this case, this is, seems to be one of the longer paintings of this sort that I've done in a while. I normally don't stick around too much, but then again, I'm not talking about them as I go, as I go which I'm sure has some something to do with it. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think we're good with that for now. What I will do is, since most of this is dry, except for the eyes, and down here, I do want to kind of do a little wash over the whole thing just to tie in all the colors. Uh, let's start with just a blue wash. So it's just very watery blue. That's where you can see underneath it, you see? And I'm just going to take it down so all these shadows become a bluer, a bluer cast. And all the colors automatically become related to one another. In their blueness. Little trick. I'm not putting it on watery enough where it will drip too much. But that's another option if you want to go the more, you know, uh, abstract way where you end up with drips on the canvas, which I think is kind of cool sometimes. I'm trying to overdo that, but and then I'll back up and look. Yeah, that's definitely helping out, I think. Now that's, yeah, that's kind of a technique, I guess, that's kind of always in my, in the back of my head as, as an option to do, right? If colors aren't aren't totally uh, syncopated, uh, they're not jiving well, you can always do a wash over the whole thing to, um, to get them all to be in the same family, so to speak. Uh, I could potentially do it over the eyes as well, but uh, in the photo they're definitely, they definitely stand out against the blue, uh, those yellow eyes, so I want to keep that. All right, another trick with the wash is you can do like a blue wash on the face and the opposite color in the background if you want to create more of a separation. For instance, taking orange, which is the complement color of blue, something like an orange. I'm not gonna be a perfect here, but if we did that in the background, of course it dulls the background, so I probably won't be leaving this. And nor does it look too pleasant, so, uh, you know, but it's worth a try. And then you come back in with white. Using wash a lot will give you that watercolor look, um, where you know you see multiple colors overlapping each other. It's kind of cool. Also, like on you know, this painting, that little strip of red that just happened to I kept there from the background previous. Um, that sort of thing you don't get without experimenting with things and doing a layer of an odd color choice just to try it out, that sort of thing. So, and that's part of the fun for painting for me. Uh, 
there's always the option to paint the same thing over and over again, the same way. Even if you do it perfectly, that just seems boring to me. It's always a big part of my painting to experiment with new technique and new visual style. All right, I'll let that dry. That's always an option for me when I, especially if I get stuck or if I want to walk away and look at it again with fresh eyes. Acrylic uh, paint, the way it dries, just allows that opportunity to step away from the canvas for a little while. thing I need to do is reduce the size of the cat's eyes. Looking at the photo, they're a bit smaller. So I'm kind of looking at the edge of the, of the face and how in relation to the eye here, and it seems like there should be more room, Something more like this. This is just a uh, china marker which is like a waxy crayon type pencil. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna take it down to there. Let's see if that helps. Closer to that, maybe. So we've got more room on this side, but uh, you know, it's still too large. A little better, I think.
I'll go let that dry before I fix that. Let's take a look. Now I think they might be slightly too close together again. I'm just going to edge them out a bit. And going with the theme, I think we'll just uh, let this layer dry and get back to it once it's dry. Okay, back at it. A little more on the eyes here. Adding back the black outline. I kind of like these little grayish strokes of the brush in there. Again, <laughs> might not stay, but for now, I'm going to add a few more just to reinforce the directionality of the fur. Oh, a little dark. Then a lot of it can be hidden just by the detail brush work, the smaller brush. Alright, the shape of this should match a little better to this curve over here. So I'm going to cut in a little bit. Shape. 
better. Let's see. This a little better too. It's a little too light for my taste, although it's about right for the photo. And what I was thinking of doing is adding some kind of texture to the background. That would add a general interest to the painting and maybe something, since a lot of these lines are going horizontally, maybe some more vertical lines in the background uh, might suggest the cat, you know, uh, surrounded by vertical stalks of grass or branches. So I was just thinking of trying a bit of vertical lines and I might add pencil lines well, just play with that for a few minutes. Let's see what we think after we put a few down. Not a necessary thing, just something to add more interest to the painting. focusing on that lower form here. Try to see what else might be helpful. Um, this big shadow is pretty big without detail, and I do see some hairs in here, so I'll add in a bit of texture at least of those tufts of hair in there.
reinforce this light. trying to decide if there's anything else I need to do before getting started on detail work. Softening up that edge a bit. So the nose isn't a straight line. <clears throat> All right. So stepping back again. I do kind of like these uh, lines. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but uh, the brush strokes going you know, that way. Uh, it's kind of cool. I like it. Okay. Um, it is very abstract, but I think once the whiskers and detail work are in, it, it'll kind of disappear. I guess I haven't put the highlights totally back in the eyes after reshaping them. Let me do that. Pretty mesmerizing. All right, let's call that good. And I'm gonna switch to a detail brush. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna use uh, the China marker again, just to add in some thinner lines into the background. Yeah, it gives it more texture and. Look, I think, let's see. Yeah, you might not be able to pick it up on camera again, but I think the effect is it's subtle, but in person I think it looks pretty good. Okay, I think I'm good with that. Um, whiskers. In the photo, I'm generally seeing. Uh, white or off-white, you know, fairly light colored whiskers. Of course, if they're in shadow, they'll look dark, so it's okay to do some dark as well. And generally, you're not going to want to do all white. Uh, you want some kind of off-white color, so as not to distract from the rest of the photo. All right, and it's really best if I can get it in one stroke. Um, they won't all come out perfect, but I'm just going to attempt it. I can always fix it again in the, after the paint dries and I've got another layer to work on. But I'm just going to come in Finding the path that the whiskers take in the photo, and 
getting your whole arm into it so it's a little more natural. You still end up with uh, some awkward looking whiskers, but in reality, some cat's whiskers end up that way anyway. You also want them to cross each other at times, else you end up with something that looks more, I don't know, uh, animated or computer generated. <laughs> something not natural. So I'm going to try not to overdo it because I want to look at it from further back. Now's a probably a good time to back up, take a look. I kind of like it. Looks good. Um, there is more whiskers in the photo. Let me go a slightly darker color here. Well, it kind of looks the same. tricky part with with this is getting the right amount of water mixed in with the paint so it flows because you don't want uh, dry that dry brush effect in the whiskers it'll give it almost like a sidewalk chalk look to it some of these actually are like that but okay Now I'm generally just going through and adding just little hints of the fur. Places where I'm seeing it in the photo. Most of these are just should be short little strokes. Then along the edge, you'll get some. You don't really see much along the top because that's kind of out of focus in the camera. If you overdo it and it looks too forced, you can always go back over it with a wash and reduce the, uh, the contrast of the... Oops, a little top of paint here. Of course, this isn't totally necessary, but I think it does add to to the painting, hiding uh, hiding some parts. Like once you get a full bit of whiskers, you don't really pay too much attention to the shape of the <laughs> of the muzzle and that sort of thing because it's all in the background suddenly. Alright, I'm also going to go with a little dark paint and bring the fur out on the edges here. that look. Um, again, searching for any other place I can add more detail. Can't see hairs in the ear here. I think 
the most important thing with all this work is just to make sure it's all placed correctly and going in the right direction. If I were to put a hair like going straight up from the eye, uh, that wouldn't be quite right. It kind of goes up and over pretty quick to the side. Noticing. So. It's looking pretty good, I think. It's very stilted looking, very kind of a, not quite, I wouldn't call it static because the pose going off to the side is pretty dramatic and so are the vertical lines in the background, but, but just his pose is fairly, uh, I don't know, uh, rigid, <laughs> if you will. But it's not a bad, rigid. It's not a bad, uh, you know, static look. I think another part of, of being an artist, painting and putting it out into the world for all to see, is in a way you kind of divorce yourself from the work itself once you finish it. Uh, I've done many paintings where, I mean, the best I can say about it is that it's not my favorite. <laughs> well, that's not true. The best I can say about it is that somebody would buy it, right? Somebody would enjoy this painting. Uh, not all paintings that I paint are my favorites. Uh, by definition, you only have one or two favorites. One favorite, really, I guess, technically. But you can have, I guess, many favorites of different varying styles and such. Anyway, um, I guess all I'm saying is uh, this painting. Well, first of all, I I do like this painting, but just paintings in general. Once I'm done with them. It doesn't matter so much of what I think about them. Um, because it, my part is done. It's uh, a finished painting. Just going in and fixing little things here and there. Darkening some spots here. parts in the photo that I can see more clearly than I can on the painting. That'll work. Where else? Let's see, this line got a little fuzzy right here. And I can also go through with a dark color on my liner brush and just put in some dark Ears here and there. The combination of the dark and the light is much more realistic looking, I think. Some of it is a little much, but on the whole, I think it's fine. I don't know how much of this detail can be seen in the video. I'll put a high resolution higher resolution photo at the end.
but for now this is looking close to being finished I think. Um, if you like this video in particular, please click like in the bottom of the YouTube uh, video and, and leave a comment if, uh, if you'd like. Uh, to see more of these, I nothing in particular planned, but this is the I think one of the first ones of this kind where it's me talking through the whole painting. And I don't know, I might uh, might do a shorter version of this, edit this video down as another post. Uh, I know this will take a long time to upload. And I guess, you know, if there's enough interest in seeing more of these, I'll, uh, I'll be happy to do more. So let me know. There's something therapeutic about talking about things in your head, <laughs> obviously. So, I don't mind doing it, it's just a matter of the more I do it, the better I'll get at it, and uh, there's always room for improvement. Alright, I think I'm happy with the shape of the eyes for the most part. Although every time I look at it, uh, I see things that are wrong about it. But that's, that's just, uh, that's just being an artist, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Perfectionism coming out. I don't know if I like that. Put a little red lines in there, but I might just do it just to emphasize the color and then smear it out. Okay, I'm gonna call this one finished, and uh, I'm just kind of looking for anything that disturbs me about it. Take this little line here. Whoop! It's all right. Okay, don't worry, you guys. I'll fix that right up that thick white beginning of the whisker there was bothering me. There we go. And then anywhere else that's a little too much, I can just go back over with a little wash just to set it back in the painting a bit camouflage, if you will. Alright, how's that look? I like it. I think it's good. I'm going to sign this. Signature has never been my favorite part of the painting. I end up signing my painting just with my first name, Wes, instead of Wes Foreman. And, and I don't know if it's the perfectionist in me or what, but it always takes me a little while to sign my name. Part of it is using a liner brush like this. It's uh, not a, necessarily the most precise thing. I, I mean, I guess I could use a china marker to sign my paintings, but it just doesn't seem right. It's like signing your name with a slightly floppy spaghetti. It's not, uh, it's not exactly ideal. Alright, let's see if we can get closer up in on it. Not bad. See some of the brushwork a little better, the hairs.
Thanks for watching, everybody.